Hello everyone, I'm Sukhpal Singh Gail. So in this video, I would like to explain about our new work that is the evolution of distributed computing systems from fundamental to new frontier, which has been published recently in Computing Journal in Spring Year. So first of all, I would like to talk about distributed computing. So distributed systems describe a class of computing systems in which hardware and software components are connected by means of a network and coordinate their actions using the MPA that is message passing interface in order to meet shared objective like in order to meet a uh, you can say that a combined objective. So what would be the possible elements for distributed computing? The first would be system design which is like basically is it is like a client server architecture that's the basic system design and what kind of communication model it contains like direct models indirect or remote invocation call and there is another concept or we can say that element of distributed computing that is consistency which could be strong or weak depends upon the context in which we are using this so as you can see in this slide we have two different types of paradigms you can see centralization and decentralization. If you can see it here, and it has been clearly seen that how systems and how distributed computing has been started as decentralized here, you can see clearly. So it was mainframe, and then it has been changed towards the decentralized. And recently, you know that cloud computing is very famous, and you know. So it is basically a centralized system. But here new paradigms are coming like for computing. So going towards decentralization and the very latest paradigm is edge computing, which is also going towards decentralized. So that is how uh, things are changing from centralized to decentralized. So in this slide, I would like to talk about uh, trends and observation that we have noticed in the previous two decades. So let us discuss some diversifications of paradigms. So we can take an example of World Wide Web, which has been invented two decades ago, almost 23 years ago in 1999. And another thing, or we can say another fundamental technology such as TCP, IP and SDT protocol that has been uh, created in the in long term ago and those platforms have been used to interconnect various heterogeneous platforms and they have also provided a we can say that also provided a single uh, you can say that mechanism through which we can build the future paradigms using the these existing concepts and the next thing i would like to talk about architecture evolving from centralization to decentralization so if you can think about so like the fundamental mechanism such as scheduling, slow scheduling, fault tolerance and monitoring which is also very important for the computing systems and the creation of new paradigms which has been result to improvement in the in these basic fundamental basic or not fundamental mechanisms such as schedulers to ensure that they are capable of effectively operating within the new set of system assumptions like if you can talk about how it was working in the old systems and these days we are working with the modern systems and how these systems, how these mechanisms are perfectly fit for the modern systems. So majority of paradigms we have seen in the previous uh, figure predominantly are decentralized except cloud computing. So this is a very important thing. So this slide clearly shows that uh, you can say that uh, the time between system conception and creation. Conception means when this concept was uh, we can say invented and the question when the system was or this concept was actually developed in the real time. So from this figure you can see this for various paradigms like mainframe, cluster computing, cloud computing, power computing. So most paradigms are conceived and created sometime within the 3 to 10 years. So it means most of the paradigms has taken 3 to 10 years from conception to creation.
So now I'm going to talk about future of large scale computing. So you can see this in the past how this paradigm has been shifted from cloud fog, edge serverless and quantum computing which has been recently started using very at, at very basic level so which could be also very useful maybe in the coming decade so at the end of Moore's law indicates that by 2025 so you can see in next four years or three years the chip density will reach a scale where the heat dissipation and the quantum uncertainty make transistors unreliable. So this is also very important thing which we need to think. And the next thing is sustainable autonomous vehicle operations by making the custom operating systems and applications. How we can make it more sustainable? That could be the also a challenge. And the next thing is hybrid schedulers. So capable of multiplexing centralized and decentralized architectures. So this is how you can use both decentralized and centralized architectures together how you can uh, how you can make the use of best use of both the architectures and the next thing is if you can talk about agility so the future distribution system must be adaptive to the uh, you can say to the environment changes so any any type of changes can happen and how your system could be exile or ready to change according to the environment conditions that could be also uh, a very challenging thing but when we achieve it it could make these uh, distributed systems more reliable and more flexible and it could be more adaptable in these kind of conditions or these kind of environment so now i'm going to discuss about how generalization can be defined against the specialization in terms of distributed computing a system paradigms are designed to be generalizable the generalization it could be useful for different uh, you can say IoT applications through the interfaces to handle wide variety of operational conditions. So this is very important. So because conditions are not same everywhere, it could be changed and the scenarios so at the cost of performance and efficiency. So we can uh, make a trade off between the cost and efficiency. And it should be more focused on creating more specialized and adapted distributed systems, which could be useful for the particular application. And it should be more suitable to a particular task at the expense of generalization and portability. Portability means like when this you can develop the general system and how this system can be used for the different environments. So your 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 so it should be it should be portable and you can move from one place to another place and use for another uh, we can say that another uh, scenario or another condition. And increasing customization of microprocessors operating systems and power management techniques so if you will uh, do the customization for power management techniques then you can also achieve some extent uh, like sustainable cloud computing that could be also a benefit similarly we have to think about microprocessor chips and operating systems and the next important thing is gpus so and npus like uh, neural processing units inside and outside the outside of data center the creation of cluster source schedulers so especially for the uh, deep learning if this could be developed and this could also solve the many problems so these kind of future uh, weakest and large scaling system should be developed and which must contain these kind of uh, you can say that uh, characteristics which could also make it easy for the future data center in terms of efficiency or in terms of the performance so another important thing is complexity at scale and the role of academic search, how we can uh, use our academic search to develop the future large scale computing systems. That's also a very important thing. So increasing difficulties in handling, uh, we can say that unseen emergent behavior means unpredictable things, unpredictable errors, unpredictable faults, anything which could happen during the execution of the system within the massive scale distributed system. So we have to think about because systems are getting very complex and how we can deal with these kind of unseen emergent behavior. And it must require rethinking well-established assumption for the system mechanisms. So our systems are running based on some assumptions. So how we can think about what, could, what we can change so that uh, uh, what we can improve so that we can deal with these kind of uh, sudden uh, you can say that certain types of errors, certain types of any uh, any like different or emergent behavior which could happen while the execution of the 
uh, large cloud data center so the next thing is with the rapid uptake of new technologies so you can see that the technologies are coming every day and these days deep learning and reinforcement learning is what very important and uh, most of the computing systems are adopting uh, uh, reinforcement learning or deep learning to making the scheduling decision so how we could use these two techniques for making the decision of system operation then introduction of temporal application and mobile compute so because it is leading to the increased complexity of these systems then how we can deal with the with this complexity that is could be also another challenge so let us talk about green agenda which is also very important factor because uh, you can say that the end user demand is increasing day by day for different iot applications and if applications are increasing demand is increasing you know that data will be also increased so in some uh, regions you can say that data is like an exabyte which has been led to uh, led to the development of exascale system in 2020 and it will be also lead to the eventually data scale which will be also available by 2035 in next 13 years so what kind of challenges it would have the first is power requirement so you need a uh, you need a power to run these systems so you need large amount of power which is required to run these kind of cloud data centers large scale systems and the important thing is how ict is consuming uh, you can say that global electricity annually it is about 10 to 15% only consumed by ict devices that is also very challenging thing how we can minimize how we can optimize that is another area of research and creation of ever larger systems so efficiency improvements due to the rebound effect that causes even greater demand and consumption so that's very important we have to think about this the next important thing is climate change and with the running of these kind of data centers large scale systems it is also making the impact on climate change and you can see this in the example 1.5 degree celsius increase in the global temperature by end of this century due to the green house gas emissions and how we can do it so there is a strong requirement of holistic coordination of energy management which we must do to solve this issue that is very important so let us think how we can do it the next important thing is how searches or academic search has been shifted from centralized system to the decentralized edge so that is also uh, you can say that how paradigms are shifting from uh, centralized system to the decentralized edge computing so it is difficult to process real time jobs on centralized cloud systems that's why that's the main reason for this shifting so which has been uh, which has been led to the uh, increasing in the latency and response time and it also include various complexities which are very difficult to handle at run time and you can see that every day we have new distributed applications for example you can talk about cryptocurrencies and machine economy so which requires computing models which are not compatible with the existing centralized cloud system then how you can deal with this so for this what kind of interface you can bring and the second thing is decentralized edge systems are very effective at processing user workload immediately on the powerful edge devices without the reliance upon the large cloud data centers means they don't need to send it to the cloud they can process it within the near to the user on the edge servers so that's that's also very important thing to reduce the latency and response time thus reducing round trip communication times at the cost of reduced computational performance so that's how we can achieve the performance in terms of latency response time and you can say communication time as compared to the cloud computing or as compared to the centralized systems so then what could be the solution so solution could be federated learning or we can say that collaborative learning this could be the solution but how so basically federated learning is a machine learning technique to train the train an algorithm across the multiple 
decentralized edge devices or servers holding local data samples without exchanging them. So this is very latest thing and researchers can use to achieve this. That could be also a good option. The next thing could be distributed green computing. So like rapid growth in the large scale distributed application servicing paradigms such as big data analytics, machine learning and IoT and which leads to increased energy consumption and environmental pollution which can make an impact on the climate. So for example, you can use deep learning for the GPUs, distributed learning, like you can develop the distributed learning clusters. So how you can do that? So first thing you can do is effective energy management aware scheduling policies. How you can uh, develop, you can use some AI technique to predict the workloads, coming workloads in the advance and then you can develop based on the, uh, based on that data. The second thing is you can develop some new technique which can manage the resources holistically. What kind of resources, it could be processor, it could be network, it could be memory, it could be storage. And the important thing is cooling. For cooling, you have two options. One is you have to improve the energy management or energy uh, energy aware source management techniques for cloud data centers so that they can consume less cooling. They need less cooling and like how they can do, maybe they can turn off the uh, idle servers, but then you have to think about the serverless computing or scalability, old start latency, various things you have to think about. The second thing is you have to provide more cooling to maintain the temperature of cloud data center. These are the two options. And if you want to do this, how you can enable the sustainable cloud computing and how you can use brown energy and renew renewable energy together. That could be the also a third challenge and how you can uh, how you can enable sustainable computing while thinking about the maintaining the uh, quality of service at runtime that could be also option so like that could be also a challenge like how you can develop the system which can take care of sustainability and reliability uh, simultaneously so there are many more issues and challenges we have discussed in the paper you can go through the paper and you can find the more search agenda, search areas in which you can work and uh, you can say that the, to develop the modern computing system which could be, uh, we can say that more power efficient and the cost efficient. So this is a public detail of this work. You can check this work on the website of this journal and you can also download it from my website which is also given here and you can find both the links also in the description so which will help you to go directly to the journal and my website thank you very much for watching this video if you have any kind of question comments and feedback please feel free to write in the comment section and do not forget to uh, like share and subscribe thank you